fueling up for another epic adventure. Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today we are in Colorado and I thought what better thing to do than travel along one of the many highways here, kind of show you just what you can find when you get off of the main roads like I-70. In fact, today we're going to be going along 24. 24 has a lot of cool things. And I think you're going to enjoy this drive. I'm gonna show you some of the scenic views, a few of the campgrounds along the way, and a couple of the points of interest. But I'm also going to go in a little bit of detail on one in particular on a separate video that you'll have to check out. Without any further ado though, what is this? Well, in fact, this is the World War II United States Army Ski Troopers Memorial right here. And you can see that as we kind of go down this, it's filled with great Great information, including that these troops were pivotal in the liberation of Norway. In fact, this entire highway has a very unique significance that we'll be exploring in that other video a bit more, but I'll give you a few of the bullet points. Along this highway, you will find something called Camp Hale. Camp Hale was established here in the very mountains that we stand in and was established so that they could work on mountaineering skills and ski skills amongst troops. At its heyday, about 15,000 troops were actually stationed at that area. And now you can go there and visit this historic site and see what it looks like. It's just up the road a little ways and it's absolutely fabulous. I can't wait to share that video with you, but until then, there's a few other things here to check out, so let's look. It is here in this very national forest that you find the Norwegian Monument, and here there are a couple of QR codes that you can scan to learn a little bit more about the battalions themselves and what exactly they did, but I love that they have this here so we can see it a little closer, including some of the historic photos and things like that. You also have an illustration of what the job being a part of these troops might have looked like. You notice he has his skis, he has his mountaineering gear with him, a little bit of everything here at this stop. This plaque mentions that this was completed with the assistance of the 4th Infantry Division at Fort Carson, which of course is located just outside of Colorado Springs. And here we find a little bit more information about the 10th Infantry. And this was the Mountain Division. And this division actually still exists today. They are just located in New York. But here you can find a list of many of the names on the Roll of Honor. Now the division at Camp Hale trained between 1942 and 1944 and again this base was quite large. At one point in time it was said that they had movie theaters, dance halls, even like a rec center, they had homes, barracks, and later on it went on to become a place where they would also hold prisoners of war. So it was quite large and these are some of the names that actually served here at that time. If you have someone who served please leave a comment below. I would love to know but um, these are just a few of the names is right here. Now stops like these always bring me a lot of joy because they put things into context. But this stop is also significant because right across the way over here there's a trailhead and that actually goes to part of the Continental Divide Trail. So you can hop on a piece of that trail right across the road here from Highway 24. There's also one other thing that I want to check out as we're moving back toward the parking lot. It's another little kiosk and it looks like it has some historic photos. Let's go check it out. Sure enough, there is some more information here about the 10th Mountain Division. Now I'm going to show you what this looks like just kind of in passing. I do encourage you guys to come out here and look at these historic photos or check out my video about Camp Hale which will be coming out very soon.
Okay guys, next stop. Ooh, it's a bright one. We actually have another viewpoint next to a really nice lake here on 24. There's tons of stuff to do along this highway, remember? So if you like to hike, this is a good one because they have short walks like the one around this one and some longer ones like that connector to the Continental Divide Trail. And uh, yeah, this is gonna be a fun one today, guys. It is here at this pull-off that we can also find out some of the summer travel routes in the area, including some of the camping spaces. Not to mention you can also find the trailheads. It is all marked here on this map. It is a great stop to find out a little bit more about the overall space and then also to see something a little different. Do you notice that they have these little huts? Well, these are actually the old huts from whenever Camp Hale was actually existing. Now, when I was looking into this, some of these are specific to people who belong to a certain group that still maintains many of these. You can't stay there unless you're a part of that group. Others, however, they do rent out and they are beautiful and in these amazing spaces. So you can kind of get an idea as to where those are right here on this particular map. But other than that, this is an amazing viewpoint. Great place to stretch your legs and see something special. Again, another stop just beyond the lake. This one tells you a little bit more about the geology and natural history of this area, and also the mining and railroads. Now these signs are a little worse for wear, but definitely come and check these out. It's a beautiful viewpoint, gives you perspective of Camp Hale's size, and it also gives you a little bit more context as to the timeline and also the training that they did here. So this entire valley was actually Camp Hale. And again, I'm gonna tell you the full story of Camp Hale on an upcoming video. It'll be really wonderful, got some beautiful overhead shots so you can see what the site looks like today but yeah this is a good pull-off guys and another reason why 24 is something that you should do when you're here in Colorado now speaking of Camp Hale there's actually a campground here also so you can come and check it out and uh, that's what we're gonna do we're gonna go check that out and see what it's like so there's tons of places you can stay along this highway that are absolutely beautiful of course as you're coming to the campsite they actually do have some more information here about summer travel and dispersed camping and then also something about the hut visitor parking we're supposed to make sure that we leave an adequate park parking space for the next group of hut visitors and so that's kind of interesting but this is actually Camp Hale and we're going to be going through Camp Hale in order to get to the dispersed camping area. You can see here a huge expansive space. We have now reached the Camp Hale Memorial Campground and just beyond this there are a few signs that say that this is a bear area so bring your bear spray and then also if you're interested in camping check the kiosk which is right on the other side of my van for any restrictions. Now, as you're checking these, you're going to see any other kinds of warnings that you might need to be aware of staying out here. You're a little ways away from the closest community, so bring your supplies with you. There are no stores here, but um, without further ado, let's go look at what the campground looks like. Here at the kiosk, we learned that there is a vehicle limitation for the campsites. It is a single campsite, which means one vehicle per site. You can have one extra vehicle and it is an additional $7. Checkout time here is at noon. There's a few other things also that tell you about the vehicle limitations. As I said before, make sure you check this out because it also has a big thing of safety rules over there. But this guys, this is why I tell you to look at the signs. It says to make sure that you store your food, garbage, and bear attractants somewhere safe. Now, I always enjoy a good scenic drive, but when I can find one that also has places that you can stay along the way, that's even a bigger bonus because then not only do you get to soak in the beauty, 
but you get to really appreciate it as you're staying inside of it. So this historic site lets you stay just, just right down there. Um, let's go find out what these campsites look like. <laughs> I might have found a new place to stay the next time I'm up here. Okay, as you can see from the drive around, there's a lot of sites here and each one of them seemed to be equipped pretty similarly. There were two restrooms and then as I was kind of like browsing through, there are some that are more ducked in, there are some that are more like open and exposed, but these are the things that every campsite has. Number one, a bear locker. Again, remember at the beginning of this trip in, it said we need to lock everything up. Well, they provide you a nice bear locker to do so. And one of the things that I like about this one is it actually has carabiners that fasten not only in one place, but another. A lot of places have the hand thing that you have to put your hand in and kind of lean up. And sometimes I've noticed that those get kind of gummy and stuck, but this, this is a no questions asked, easy solution to keeping a bear away. Each site also has a fire ring with a grill top. And these are all in pretty good shape. I was looking at a couple of them. They just have some ash, but there's no real trash in here. I am assuming they have a camp host. They must have a camp host because I haven't seen any trash around this area at all. And there are signs saying pack in, pack out. But you and I both know that from staying at tons of other places that have had those same warning signs that people just sometimes don't do that. So there must be a camp host. Every site also has a picnic table and it's these nice metal ones. So guess what guys? You know where I'm going with this. No sags, no drags. But in addition, each table also has one of these little plaques on it. These plaques talk about the warnings against bears. Now, a lot of people think, okay, I'm just gonna lock my food up and then I'm done. But bears aren't just attracted to food. They're attracted to tons of stuff. In fact, this list right here, it, it's expansive guys. There's a ton of stuff on here, including some toiletries and cosmetics because anything that has an interesting smell is going to have a bear's nose to go and <laughs> And one thing that I learned whenever I visited Yosemite a couple of years ago is that bears have gotten smart and they know how to open your doors now. So whenever it says anything that has a smell, put it in the bear locker, just do it, just do it. <laughs> now beyond the table is the campsite itself. And I think you can see this is a very large campsite. They do have the vehicle restrictions, but this is large enough for a large RV plus a tow behind right here very easily. My van looks like it is dwarfed in the space actually. So not too bad of a location, beautiful views, massive sites, good condition, no trash. This is a good one here on 24. Well guys, I think you can see by now why Highway 24 is such a cool place to hang out. There's other campgrounds, some other historic viewpoints. There's even a ghost town that you can see from the highway. In fact, that's a ghost town that I kind of drove past the other day. It's the town of Gilman. It used to be a mining community. There's two different viewpoints that you can see various portions of it. However, you cannot go into it because it's considered to be a toxic, privately owned, 
piece of land. Now it's very fascinating to see because it's one of the most intact structurally that I've seen at all. It's very fascinating. But at the same time, you can't go there. If you are looking for a unique place to kind of go in Colorado that's a little bit off the beaten path, Highway 24 is for you. You will absolutely enjoy it, I guarantee it. Remember guys, we're not here for a long time, but we are here for a good time. And sometimes just getting out and doing a scenic drive is that. Till next time guys, bye.